Good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Grassick, and I'm uh, the Director of Cultural Studies, although not for long. And uh, Cultural Studies involves social studies as well as several other disciplines. And uh, I wanted to welcome you to the OCON program, and OCON stands for One Community, One Nation. And it's a new social studies program, K through 5, eventually. Right now we've uh, developed the lessons uh, for grades 2 and 5, uh, 2 through 5. It's been a massive project. And it's taken a couple of years, and uh, we've been field testing uh, grades three and four. And uh, I want to just welcome you, and I think this is a very exciting project. And uh, you all, uh, whether you're eager or not to take it on, I hope you are eager to take it on. And I'm glad your principals have uh, encouraged you to be part of this, because I think in the long run you're going to find that this is an excellent way to be educating our young people. So I really look forward to uh, you uh, testing out these materials and giving feedback and, uh, and learning during this week of training uh, or this couple of days of training and then subsequent days uh, throughout the year. Learning more and more about this approach to teaching and uh, how we uh, are weaving in various kinds of content to uh, the larger social studies mission. So. Uh, again, I want to welcome you, and then I want to actually explain to you in the next few minutes what OCON is really about, so that you have some understanding of where it's come from and where we hope it will go. So that said, um, if you feel as though you need to ask me a question or anything like that, I'm sorry, I won't be there to answer the question. Um, but uh, at least uh, there will be people who could stop this video uh, and could answer your questions, uh, people in the room who have been working with me and working with uh, the development of OCON for a number of years. First of all, what I want to say is that it is a K through 5, it's envisioned as a K through 5 social studies, um, social studies curriculum. Right now, uh, as mentioned, we've developed uh, grades 2 through 5. And when I say developed, I mean really developed. We've uh, developed lessons for every day that you want to teach OCON, and we hope you'll want to teach OCON many, 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 many days of the year, because that's the way uh, for kids to really become engaged and involved in the content uh, that will uh, make them succeed, number one, on um, the, uh, the state tests and the accountability assessments, but also will help them become uh, richer and finer citizens over the long haul. Let me start with this whole notion of citizenship. Um, when this uh, idea was developed, and it was developed, it's really the brainchild of the former superintendent, uh, Dr. Sheldon Berman, but really I should go back and say it's really not his brainchild. It really goes back to Thomas Jefferson. It really goes back to John Adams. It's really about <coughs> um, what our founding fathers, especially those two whom I just mentioned, really were interested in, interested in, and that was a, a an informed public that was able to make good decisions, wise decisions, uh, as part of a democracy. The only way you can really function in a democracy, democracy successfully is to be uh, somebody who is really knowledgeable but also has practiced uh, the skills and habits of citizenship. And that's where OCON comes in. It's a social studies curriculum and it teaches the standards, um, but it is also a social studies curriculum in the truest sense of social studies. The National Council for the Social Studies really believes that uh, the purpose of social studies is to create and develop informed uh, decision, uh, excuse me, informed citizens who are capable of making effective decisions uh, in, in a democracy uh, and recognizing that it's an interdependent world. And so we are trying to do all these things with this little curriculum, which isn't little at all. It's a massive, massive, massive uh, uh, project, and uh, it still will have another year or two in, in the development. But what you will be testing is fully developed, although we're going to take your feedback and we're going to hope that we can refine it and make it even better. We're trying to respond to the original civic mission of schools as perhaps articulated by Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and other founding fathers and many other people down through um, the decades. But um, we are trying to do that while at the same time um, teaching the necessary social studies content that is required by state law. And we are able to do that. Um, and importantly, uh, if we're going to create good citizens, 
um, we have to start young. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, uh, I'll give this student, a, you know, as the state requires, um, a civics course or um, a civics experience, let's say, in high school. Or um, it, some, some uh, how should I put it, I guess, you know, some, uh, sometimes uh, a, a student will take a political science course or a civics course in college. But, you know, it's not that those aren't important, but if we haven't built on uh, a background of experience associated with civics and uh, associated with participatory decision making and associated with uh, um, practicing the skills and habits of citizenship so that people can really get geared up for a democracy over time, if, if kids don't have that experience in kindergarten, in first grade, in second grade, in third grade, and right on through, it's not enough to just take a civics course in high school, or not enough to take a civic experience or course in, um, uh, in, um, in college in order to really transform um, our young people into active, participating citizens. So what we are all about is giving kids that practice right from the beginning. One of the things we're doing with this curriculum is we are weaving in seven civic dispositions. Let me just run through what those seven civic dispositions are and you'll get a feel for perhaps how these can be addressed in a variety of contexts, in a variety of lessons, um, and in interesting and useful ways. Uh, in terms of a sidebar, I should simply say that what we're trying to do in this, uh, in the teaching, is use an inquiry-based uh, approach to instruction, where kids puzzle out answers. We don't give them answers; they become the natural problem solvers that they are, and they apply those skills um, of problem solving and thinking and critical thinking and uh, and all the things that re are required when when people solve riddles, when 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 when, when people solve puzzles. We know that when you solve a riddle, uh, when, when, a, when a young person is given a riddle, uh, a light bulb goes off and that person begins to really kind of feel excited about, oh, let's see, and, and, and it becomes a sort of internal competition that takes place. And that person tries to, to solve it. We're natural problem solvers. And so what we've tried to do is structure our lessons so that they're inquiry-based and they require a kind of active participation and sometimes a lot of collaboration with other students, uh, recognizing that not one person uh, has all of the answers, but together many people can have a variety of answers um, and a variety of solutions and perhaps the best solution to a problem will emerge. And so um, that's sort of the background, but the seven civic dispositions that I was uh, uh, beginning to talk about are these. Um, one is the commitment to social justice. A second one is individual responsibility. We want all kids to understand what it means to be committed to social justice. And so in some of the lessons, there are examples of people historically who have been committed to social justice. And there are examples of people who have been successful in righting a wrong uh, out there in the world. And we want kids to see these models. We want to see them locally in our own community, we want to see them in Kentucky, and we want to see them uh, nationally and worldwide. And so our curriculum is, uh, is, is wide-reaching, and, uh, and it, it's meant to really broaden students' understanding of this kind of civic disposition. Individual responsibility, of course, is another one. We're not going to really change uh, our world if people don't um, shoulder some of the responsibility for making this world better. A third civic disposition is um, promotion of the common good. A fourth would be critical mindedness. A fifth would be open mindedness. A sixth would be compassion. We want kids to develop a sense of compassion and there are many ways that we can do that. We can do that through uh, very um, interesting uh, trade books that our students are using. Um, we can do that um, by developing role plays and scenarios that uh, uh, really help students understand what compassion is. We can, we can also have students look out in their own communities and see what some of the needs are and then see how they could possibly solve some of these problems or at least contribute to a solution. And so we have a kid-friendly website, for example, where kids can actually look at what's going on with uh, 
uh, organizations around the city that are trying to address serious problems. Those problems could be problems associated with not knowing the language because you're an immigrant or those problems could be some, have something to do with uh, uh, the effects of coal mining on, on, on people's lungs or it could have something to do with um, uh, another problem might be, uh, might be poverty or um, educational issues in home in, in the home or health issues. There are a myriad, uh, there are many, many, many kinds of problems as we all know. And what we're trying to do is help our, our young people uh, be introduced to those problems, but have them be able to do the research, have them be able to be the investigators, have them be able to, uh, on their own, um, through a kid-friendly website, do some of this research so that they can then perhaps decide to uh, come together in a classroom um, and together look at, um, uh, uh, a service learning project that they could uh, commit to um, to help uh, to help uh, address a particular problem. So we're really serious about this. We're we're thinking that this curriculum has to be a, a very broad curriculum that is really helping students um, become compassionate, shoulder individual responsibility, be critical minded. Not all solutions are good solutions, so let's we let's let's sort out the best ones. Um, be open-minded so that they understand the value of diversity, that uh, that's not a negative when we live in a diverse uh, society. It's a huge positive, and if we can only help kids understand this at an early age, they will become much more effective citizens later on. The seventh civic disposition is one that uh, we call negotiation and compromise. We all know that we can't always have our own way, and kids understand this very, very immediately uh, because they often don't get their own way. But if they learn the skills of negotiation and compromise, and if there are loving teachers and guiding teachers who help them employ the skill of negotiation and compromise, what they learn in the long run is that there is a different route to, uh, to, 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 to uh, making things happen in a good way in their lives. They won't always get their way, but maybe they'll get a little bit of their way through a compromise. They won't always um, be able to solve every problem, but they'll realize that uh, there is a mature way to attempt to solve a problem, um, and that if they learn the skills associated with negotiating and compromising, that is something that they can take with them. And it also will make them a more effective um, uh, uh, citizens in a variety of ways helping them understand our Congress and maybe even writing their Congress people uh, and saying, you know, I think maybe you need to learn a little bit about the skill of negotiation and compromise. So there are lots of things that we're trying to do with this curriculum, but um, it's very important for us to make sure that we are weaving into all of our lessons, um, whether these are lessons about uh, human rights or whether these are lessons about world cultures or lessons about um, the unfolding of democracy, whatever the lessons are about, we know that these um, civic dis dispositions can be woven into it. Now some of you are probably familiar with, um, I'm sure all of you are familiar actually, um, unless you're brand new in our district, um, with the uh, Care for Kids program. And the Care for Kids program uh, is meant to be something that is pervasive. It is something that occurs um, throughout the day in our elementary and middle school um, classrooms. And what that is is a social and emotional learning program. Um, and it's very flexible. Um, it, there are, is a curriculum, but it's the kind of thing that can be woven into morning meetings when kids gather. It can occur uh, at any moment during a classroom experience. Um, but it's where kids look at some of the norms of behavior that uh, will work for a community as opposed to just a, a selfish uh, single person. Um, and it's an attempt to build a sense of community, a deep and rich sense of community within the classroom so that kids become more um, responsive to uh, the needs of others and they become more respectful of uh, an effective process for moving along. And it's, of course, a way of undermining some of the problems uh, associated with classroom management. Um, and so there is this Care for Kids program that is already in place. And as I say, it's a social and emotional learning program. But what is very interesting and I think very important, and uh, when we were designing, and while we are designing, um, and continue to design, 
uh, to, to design uh, the OCON, One Community, One Nation curriculum, we have been very mindful of social and emotional learning. Um, we have been very mindful of the Care for Kids program. And it is our belief, and I think uh, there's no question about it because we've gotten a, a fair amount of feedback in this first year of implementation, that OCON and the Care for Kids program dovetail very nicely. OCON also dovetails very nicely with our literacy program because our literacy program, um, the, the learning of English language arts, um, K through 12 really, uh, is all about kids um, learning how to uh, not only read um, but how to uh, write and how to think, uh, which writing does teach very effectively. Um, it's all about critical thinking. It's all about um, looking at uh, the evidence and uh, making sure that uh, your claims can be backed up by reasons and good evidence. And so what I want you to know is that OCON um, also dovetails very nicely or overlaps very nicely with our efforts in literacy. Because in literacy, or, or in, in the wider English language arts context, um, uh, we want kids to be highly literate and highly involved with the world of ideas and we want them to really understand learning through reading, uh, learning through speaking, learning through um, defending arguments and so on and so forth. Um, and we are using many, many trade books, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in our um, different grade level OCON curricula. For example, in the third grade, um, <coughs> where kids are really learning, I think, very directly and very specifically how to make a difference um, and how to contribute to their community and how to participate in, um, in, a, in a project that partners them with somebody in the community or some organization in the community so that they can make a difference and create a two-way street with uh, whatever organization they're working with. Um, <coughs> in that third grade, there are 40 trade books. So in your classroom, if you're a third grade teacher, we bring over a box of 40 really interesting books and what we're discovering is that students are really enjoying these books. In the fourth grade, 25 books. In the second and fifth grade, the same thing. Books, books, books. So, and these can be interspersed in the social studies um, uh, part of the day, that, that period, but also these books can be used uh, in the literacy circles, uh, other parts of the day, even during Care for Kids if a teacher deems that necessary. So there are lots of ways. And these are books that are filled with moral dilemmas and social justice kinds of issues, but in a kid-friendly way. These are, are, are largely picture books. Um, some of them aren't. Some of them would be read only by the teacher. Some of them would be read by the student as well. So what I'm trying to show you is that this curriculum is um, a multi-dimensional curriculum. It's a curriculum that uh, teachers, not somebody sort of set aside, you know, way out in some publishing world who is divorced from what is really, is really happening on the ground, but actual teachers who have been very recently participating in the classroom have been developing. And so what we're discovering is that teachers, uh, I won't say that they haven't had some trouble trying to implement this because it's new and it takes time and any time you implement uh, or introduce a new curriculum, and you haven't yet owned it and taken it on for yourself, um, there's kind of a, a start-up period. There's a, there's a run-up period time to, to, to ramp up and make it effective and working. But what we're discovering overall is that most teachers are finding that this curriculum is engaging kids. Uh, it is helping them really think about history, is helping them think about the five great ideas of social studies. Um, and it will do more and more of that because as we've gotten feedback, we've aligned and lined more carefully. Um, but what we're discovering is that teachers are saying that um, except for some of these little bumps in the road, um, the curriculum is working. It's engaging kids. And I'm going to actually uh, read a few quotations to you that will kind of demonstrate what we're learning from kids. Um, uh, <coughs> Last year, and I'm going to have to read these, of course, um, but uh, one, one little third grade girl, when uh, we, we ran some focus groups, and uh, we asked kids, well, what are some of the big ideas that you've been learning? Well, one little third grader in a very weak voice from the back of the room said, well, I learned that even though we are young and small, we can still make a difference. 
Now that's a really powerful quotation. It wasn't made up. It was something a student said. Another third grader said, well, Okan taught me how to be open-minded to other people. So students really are learning, and I think they're using the vocabulary of the Okan curriculum, the civic dispositions that we use uh, as terms. They're beginning to make them their own. Many students describe the importance of promoting the common good, using the term followed by descriptions such as, and quote, doing the things that are best not only for you, but for everyone you're working with. And another student said, it is good to do what is for the common good because it's the right thing, not because you get something in return. Another student remarked, I learned that nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. I think that's a beautiful quotation. I'm going to read that again. I learned that nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. And another student explained compassion in this way. Compassion is to show your kindness to people and not just saying kind things, but showing it. Now that's kid-friendly language for sure because it comes from a kid and it sounds like a kid, but it's real. You can tell that it's real. Students have also made uh, several other kinds of comments um, and <coughs> those comments uh, come, up, come up in a variety of contexts, but um, one student commented about cleaning up around the neighborhood and park and here's what he said. Where I live, there was a lot of trash in my neighborhood. Before, I didn't pay attention until we talked about it in class. What class? Ocon. Another student said about reducing personal water use uh, and doing some recycling. I no longer waste water at home, and we recycle in my house now. Why? Because of Ocon. Another student um, uh, really uh, thought about the negotiation and what he or she was learning uh, with regard to uh, negotiation and compromise, one of the seven civic dispositions, and said, uh, I'm the youngest and always get my way, but now I let my brother have a say. And at home, someone took something, but I decided to talk about it and let it go when, befo <laughs> and let it go when before I would have beat them up. So you can see that the Ocon curriculum is a social and emotional learning curriculum, but it also is about real world kinds of issues. Pollution, um, recycling, uh, negotiation, water use, cleaning up the neighborhood, etc. And here's the last one that I'd like to read, um, and that is, there have been some rich discussions taking place at home. And here are a few student comments. And so it's reaching into the parent world as well. And then, and that's what we were hoping right from the beginning, that parents would get involved with this. And we haven't been trying to hide anything from them. We're trying to have them participate in this curriculum. I talked to my family about why they should make a difference, one student said. Another student said, I teach my brother now about being fair. And a third student said, I talked with my mom about social justice. What third grader talks about social justice? Well, I want to conclude with just a few things. Uh, and those few things involve what this curriculum is really about. And um, <clears throat> second grade, just so you know, is really trying to answer an essential question that goes more, more or less like this. How can an appreciation of differing cultures benefit a community and contribute to the common good? Third grade is looking at an essential question that kind of um, uh, frames the whole year uh, that sounds something like this. How do people effectively make community decisions and improvements that benefit the common good? You can see built into these um, uh, essential questions is some of the vocabulary or some of the language of, of the civic dispositions. In the fourth grade, we're looking at how have civil rights and human rights expanded over time? You know, in this country, we started out with uh, slavery very early on, and it's been a steady march of increasing the number of rights for the various um, uh, groups within our society uh, who had their rights um, limited. And, uh, but what is it about our government? What is it about our philosophy as a nation, as a people, that has allowed us over time to expand civil rights and expand human rights? Um, <clears throat> and then in the fifth grade, uh, there are two essential questions. How has democracy developed and changed over time in the United States? So how has democracy really changed? And actually, we're also looking at other democracies, too, uh, to compare our democracy with other democracies, because we're not the only kind of democracy. We're not the only democracy. And then finally, how can individuals in the United States contribute to a vibrant democracy? What can we do to make democracy 
rich, vibrant, effective. So, again, I want to thank each and every one of you um, for taking this on. I'm sure there will be some difficulties, there will be some stresses, there will be some concerns, but we have resource teachers who are going to work with you and we hope that they're going to work very closely with you and uh, we're going to develop a protocol um, that those uh, resource teachers will use so that they'll be involved with you but not taking over, um, but they'll assist you where you need some assistance, um, they'll be there to ask, answer questions, they'll be there to hear your feedback and address um, improvements in the curriculum is necessary. This is not something that you take on lightly, but it is something that is extremely important. I can't tell you how much I am pleased that you are taking this on. I congratulate you in advance. Go for it. Thank you very much.